Hello again. So, before I start the video with the top 10 movies, there are a few things that, um, well, I have a better idea. Instead of doing that, there will be another video put up after this. And it will be an update. And in the update, there is a special announcement in it. So I would recommend, highly recommend, watching it if you would like to find out what's, ha what's actually happening with a very special video that I mentioned before, but isn't up yet. So I guess you have to find that video soon. Anyway, to move on to the top 10 movies, and as you can see, my sister is not here, and probably won't be here for a while with the videos. Nothing bad happened, it's just where we are right now, it will be better that way, kind of. So, just top 10 movies, in my opinion... I looked for plots, any genre was available, any rating was available, but there will be a sm very small spoiler alert in this video because sometimes I will have to explain a little bit more if you haven't seen them, but let's move on to it. Honorable mention is 17, 1776, which was made in 1972, and this is an honorable mention because it's a movie that I really watch once or twice a year, but I do it every year, and it's basically about the Declaration of Independence and how it got signed. I know, I know, very, very geeky of me to do this, and I do it every 4th of July. If it's not on 4th of July, it'll be before or after, but it happens every year. Number 10, 12 Angry Men, 1957. Now, this film was originally a play, and I own the play. Well, not own it, but I have a book, and... I read it back in high school, and I fell in love. This play made me fall in love with plays. And it's basically about a jury of all men, and they have to decide whether or not a young boy convicted of killing his father is guilty or not guilty. And while everyone sees him as guilty, there's one that doesn't. And back in this, back in the age and era that this film is supposed to be in, where women couldn't be on court and all that, the rule was, or is kind of still is, where it has to be 12 for one thing. So they can't be decide in half they all have to go for one decision and I love this play for the camera angles it's beautifully filmed it's in black and white which isn't really that common nowadays in film the last one I believe that was in black and white was Nebraska from a year or two ago and then before that, the artist. But the characters are fantastic. And just how they bring out each role is great. And it's definitely a classic, in my opinion. Number three. Number nine, my bad. Number nine. Three Idiots. 2009. This is... Like I said before, I didn't care about the genre or any year it came out or where it was filmed. This is a Bollywood film, 
and I was shown to it by a friend of mine, um, the author, nine, uh, 93, and it is one of my favorite foreign films, because just how fast it can go from zero to a hundred, but how emotional it is. It's technically a comedy and also a drama, and throughout the entire film, you just feel you're going to connect with one of the three idiots in some way, shape, or form. And the musical numbers are also great. You'll always have that one song that you love, and that's why I love this movie, where there's something for everyone in this film. Number 8, Diary of the Dead. 2007. If there is one thing that I love the most, it is a good zombie film. And it's either a hit or a miss with me right now. This was definitely a hit. And George A. Roman uh, Romano, or Romero's, his films are great. They really are. So I was having a hard time deciding on this one. Or another one. They're both zombie films. But I went with Diary of the Dead because the aspect of seeing everything through a lens. And the fact that you're really getting into the mind of a filmmaker. Which is who the main character is. You're basically him as he's filming everything going down. And they rarely switch pers um they rarely switch perspectives, but when they do, you get the other side of things. And I love that quality. Along with that, the unique characters in it, and the way that they kill the zombies. I just thought it was all very, very well put together. Number 7, Mulan 1998. My favorite Disney film of all time. And technically my favorite princess, but people will not call her a princess because she is not really a princess. So, yet again, the music is fantastic, the art, the art style is great, and I love seeing Disney take on an aspect of the foreign culture. And they really did it with the whole Chinese culture. And you had to watch this young woman go from having to be like, um, having to go meet someone to tell them if you're going to be a good bride to saving the, saving China. So, I thought it was fantastic. And it's, she gives a real powerful message, message to girls out there saying that you don't have to do this. You don't have to be that. Be who you want to be, and you can accomplish anything. Number six, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, 1989. Probably my favorite 80s film, and I just love the fact that Keanu Reeves is in this as a shaggy-haired stoner-type character who's supposed to pretend to be dumb, and then seeing this, and then Speed, and then looking at clips of him in The Matrix or any other modern film right now, and it's so funny to see him act like this. I also like the film because I don't really like Doctor Who with the whole time travel, TARDIS, and all that. This is kind of like Doctor, Doctor Who with the telephone booth. You're going through time, meeting characters from history. And I like that. And it is a comedy, so the humor was great. Seeing all these historical figures having to live or experience the 80s, I thought it was like hilarious. Another honorable mention is also um, George A. Romano's Dawn of the Dead, 2004. 
I love this film to death, but what really got me to decide which one of Dawn or Diary would be which one would I go to first. And this is a good film, but the other one does stack up a little bit more. Number five, Back to the Future. Correction, this is probably my favorite 80s film. And I did want to put the trilogy on here. The difference was I knew it didn't feel 100% right if I did that. So I had to decide from all three which one would be my favorite. And it has to be the original. And I just love Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox. Their characters are great. And I recently finished the video game of Back to the Future by um, Telltale Games. And if you like the Back to the Future um, trilogy, you will like the game. Because it's a continuation, and they do put in references from the old films. And just about ev almost everyone from the original is back into Back to the Future. And I just love that ex aspect. And I guess I'm not also a big fan of things like sci-fi, which is kind of what I also put Back to the Future as other than comedy. But this film really helped me see how good it was. Number four, Sydney White, 2007. This is a gem in a pile of rocks. And that pile of rocks would probably be Amanda Bynes' career. This film is great. It is a twist off of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, but instead with college students. And it connects with me more now because I am a college student. And to see that just a simple tale can be turned into something so relatable to everybody, it's very, very great. And I don't want to keep saying great, but I don't know any other words. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a good film. <laughs> But I do think out that out of all of the films that she has done, this is her this is my favorite film from Amanda Bynes. Number three, Scream, nineteen ninety six. With the Back to the Future trilogy, with Scream I also had to decide on which one out of the first one or the third one. I want to include. They're both very close favorites of mine. I went with the original because without it, you wouldn't have every other one. And I kind of like the characters a bit more when you actually have to start and like get introduced to them. But if I had, I hope I never have to choose them again because they're both really good. While the fourth one is something that I never really want to talk about. Because I really did not like that one. So, and also I didn't know that this... I thought it was like a, um, a horror and all that. And people say it was like a dark comedy or like a spoof spin-off thing of horror. And I'm, I got kind of surprised from, by that. Because that's not how I see it. Either way, it's one of my favorites. Number two, Les Miserables, or Les Miserables, I'm, I'm tired, I'm sorry, from 2012. I saw this movie twice in theaters, and the songs got me. The fact that they sang just the entire thing, except for the parts that actually had talking in it, I could not be happier. 
they chose the right cast of Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, Anne Hathaway, Sasha Bone Carter, Helen Bone... Ah, uh, I combined two people by accident. Helena Bonham Carter, Sacha Barr, and Conan. They're, they're all great. Fantastic actors. And I could have not been more proud with how this turned out. And seeing the play is on my bucket list. I have to see that. And as of my number one, I have to go back to a classic for me. One that made me have so much pride and joy as someone who loves films and anime, which is Howl's Moving Castle from 2004, by far my favorite film, the characters are relatable, I love the romance, the magical elements, Hayao Miyazaki, you did a great job with this, thank you. That is all I have to say to you, is thank you for this film. You made my sad days bright, and I am so happy to get that. I'm... Also, I am so sorry this video seems kind of rushed. And I didn't mean for it to be, but... I hope you guys enjoy it. If there is something that you thought should have been on here then put it down in the comments. I do look at every comment that is in- that gets posted here. Good or bad. And ask me a question, I'll reply. I do all the time. So, don't be afraid to like the video if you like, or leave a comment, and see you next time. See ya.